Hello, this is Mike, <laughs> NoStressMike.com. Uh, it was funny. Um, on the <laughs> victims, predators, and uh, sheepdog, uh, I was, <laughs> when I was editing it, I realized uh, I, I didn't completely fully <laughs> uh, answer the question for the comment. And uh, I say uh, what they were wondering about was how would you defend yourself against uh, something that you're not familiar with, uh, something you've never seen before, if you never had to experience this before, you know, and you're unarmed, so, you know, what would you do? Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the physics, and like I say, the, the, the first video on this, I was talking about the mental preparation and uh, the preparation, when I said prepare, uh, even the sheepdog prepares to do uh, what the sheepdog has to do. Uh, the pr uh, predators, they prepare to do what they're going to do. It's the victims that don't prepare. <laughs> so that's why they're victimized. They don't have a plan. And if they had a plan, it wasn't a workable plan. Either they didn't have all the tools, they didn't have it fully thought out or something like that. So they're still incapable of countering uh, the attack. Okay, now, my videos, all, all, just about all my videos, I talk uh, about the morals and all this kind of stuff. You have to understand that stuff first before you can take the physical action. That's what I think is so funny is so many people think, well, I'm just going to buy a gun. And when this guy comes out with a sword, I'll just go on and shoot him. You know, it is, it's not like that. And it's funny because, uh, now these people thinking, well, this is my plan. And it's funny because uh, the spouse of that person thinks, oh, well, you're crazy. You're just going to go shoot somebody. That's where people get the idea of when somebody has a, a weapon, they're going to end up shooting somebody or, or hurting somebody. Well, they say, if you have a hammer, everything looks like, looks like a nail. See, that's their mentality. So then that's why they, they, they are victimized all the time. They don't want to take the steps. They don't want to take the responsibility of owning a hammer and looking at things in reality. Not looking at everything like it's a nail. <laughs> so, uh, in other words, you... Uh, you have to, like I say, the first thing is get yourself uh, in the head, in your, in your spirit, and all this kind of stuff going. That's why I was talking about we have an emotional, I mean, a, uh, a moral responsibility to protect ourselves. If you don't even understand that, what are you going to do against the guy with a, with a hammer? <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you don't under, you've missed the point. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, so I've given you all the information you need. Even uh, at one time, I put up uh, videos on the physical uh, actions that I do. Uh, not I put up everything that I do because, like I say, I still use them. <laughs> you know, I don't want people to know exactly what I do. But I've given you some ideas that you can work with. And then that goes right back to more preparation. You have to go through the steps to learn how to physically take care of yourself. I've even mentioned that in uh, uh, some videos about uh, taking some uh, martial arts classes. And uh, you can do it, you know, either take regular martial arts classes or take private classes. Go to somebody that teaches martial arts and let them know that you want to learn what you need to learn uh, for and then you tell them. I want to learn 
uh, what I need to learn to go up against uh, somebody with a knife. I need to learn what I need to learn somebody with a gun. You know what I mean? You need to tell him what it is that you want to defend yourself from and he can help you. Uh, and for, for me, uh, this, is, this is what I do. That's, you know, like I say, the two things I do. One is help people stay healthy, uh, find out how their body works, and help them take responsibility for their own body. And uh, the other part is I teach people how not to be victimized. And I don't do it like the martial arts teacher does. <laughs> I do it uh, through the emotional and spiritual and all that other kind of stuff. And then if you really are serious, then you, when you travel with me, I show you what you need to do and what to look for and, and all this kind of stuff because your safety is my safety. My safety is your safety. So uh, we have to take care of each other. So we will, and then, but I can tell you precisely what the threats we will be facing. And then uh, you can start focusing on that. Okay, now uh, for me personally, what I do is I work out with any kind of weapon at all. I don't care, uh, I say I use shovels, uh, staff, um, uh, let's say t t tomahawk. Uh, it, it doesn't make it. Uh, my pen, my ink pen, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I work out with all different types of tools. Not so much weapons, but tools. Even a sword, we're talking about the sword. I even work out with a sword. Uh, now I don't work out with everything all the time, every day, no. You're right, I don't do that. But I work out with different weapons whenever I can get my hands on them. And then I work out with them. Uh, and the, 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 the reason why is once I learn how this weapon works, I'm not saying I'm going to become an expert at it, but I learn how it works and I know what that weapon is capable of doing. And I know what that weapon cannot do. That's, and then what I do when I'm faced with that weapon, I go to what it's not capable of doing. <laughs> in other words, I can run away if you picked up a stick and you're going to beat me with a stick. I can run away. Okay. Now, if you've got a bow and arrow, running away isn't a good option. So, see, that's what I'm saying. You, or uh, What I do is get familiar with all different types of weapons. And, uh, uh, and they're not, to me, they're a weapon, but... Uh, to most people, these are tools. Like I say, I use shovels, I use, uh, like I say, a stick. <laughs> I use anything. Uh, I find out what that particular item, how useful is it as a tool? What is its capabilities? I know what my capabilities are. I need to find out what that's the capabilities of that particular instrument. And even if it's a gun, and, uh, and this is the same thing in the convenience store shooting. Uh, he had a large uh, 1911, that's a large 45 semi-automatic pistol. He, at that time, I had a small 9mm. Uh, small in size and small in weight, especially compared to his 45. I mean, there's probably seven, maybe 10 ounces difference between them. And you would think it doesn't make that much difference. It makes enough of a difference that one is gonna get hit with the bullet before the other one gets a chance to, to get a shot out. I prove that. I talk about that when I teach. I teach stuff like that. So people know and understand uh, what the true threat is and the weapons. And I say, so it's not the person. See, when, okay. First thing, let's say you somebody pulls a sword out on me. When he pulls that sword out on me, then uh, what I'm going to do is the first thing, look and see the the. It is, hasta mañana. I, I look to see 
what kind of sword? How long? How heavy? How? It, because all this makes a difference, <laughs> you know. Uh, if it's uh, like a Bowie knife, isn't really a sword, but I mean, I've, Bowie knife is close close to a short sword. I would handle that a whole lot different than if somebody had some Viking sword, some great big old Viking sword. You know what I mean? So I I have to I look at the weapon. So I see the weapon, and then I look at the person that's holding the weapon, and that we're right back to the the shooting at the convenience store. Uh, I looked at the weapon first, so I knew he had a 45 automatic, 1911, no big deal. Uh, he covered it so I couldn't see if the hammer was pulled back. That particular weapon, the hammer has to be pulled back before it'll work. And I yelled, the way he was holding it, I couldn't see if the safety was on. So in other words, it, he might have had the safety on and the hammer forward, he wasn't even ready to shoot. If, that, if I could see that, I would have walked up to him and slapped the shit out of him. Because I knew he couldn't do anything about it. Okay, but I couldn't, didn't realize because the way he was holding, I couldn't see if the safety was on and the hammer was back. So, but so the weapon is the first thing I saw. The next thing I saw was the person, and I saw the person was holding the weapon in another direction. <laughs> he wasn't even pointing the weapon in the direction where the threat was. I was the threat. He didn't know I was the threat. <laughs> he didn't realize that I was armed. So, his, his, so the guy made a personal error by not pointing the weapon in the proper direction. And so, <laughs> you know, so these are the things I'm looking for. But it's the same thing. If he would have pulled out a sword, first thing I would have looked at was the sword. Okay, now he's got a sword. Then well, I could have pulled my weapon, from my gun out, and said, hey, "Drop the damn sword." <laughs> you know, I mean, no big deal. So. Uh, but so that's why I look at the, the the weapon so I know what it is I'm going up against then who it is I'm going up against and then how many I'm going up against just like that they only had one weapon got one gun even though there was two of them in the store there was only one weapon that I could see now and I was watching the second guy watching for what remember you all they pull the shoulder up when they draw their weapon he didn't have a weapon in his hand, so I knew before he could pull the weapon, he had to raise his shoulder. So in other words, I could still look at the guy with the gun, and at my peripheral vision would show me the guy's shoulder coming up, and then I would have shot automatically right then, but it didn't come up because he didn't have a, a, a weapon. So that's why I, I held off. And so, in other words, what I'm saying is... Uh, you have to plan this stuff. You have to prepare. Prepare is more than just go buy a gun, <laughs> you know. And people say, well, you need to go practice and practice and practice. No. If you get the proper weapon, it works smoothly for you. The same thing goes with the sword. If you get the proper sword, it moves smoothly with you. They say a sword is an extension of your hand and your arm. The proper sword. The one that's not, is not. It's just a big hunk of steel that you're swaying around. But if it's the proper one, it's the extension of what you already have, your body already. So uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, and that's why when you practice enough with hand, uh, hand weapons, then you can get them to become an extension of your body. Remember when I talk about the proper handgun for self-defense? You don't aim. You just pick it up and use it. It shoots exactly where you want it. Why? Because it's an extension of your arm. It's just automatic. That's how you do it. And, and it's the same thing goes for all weapons. Some don't work well for you. Then those are the ones you shy away from. But there's a reason for all this stuff. And that's part of the preparation. The physical preparation of doing it. Do you want to go to that much effort? Most people don't. That's why I don't teach most people the physical act of the, the violence that they're going to have to be using. Because they don't want to put out the effort and the commitment that it takes to be able to handle a sword. And that, that's, that's what it is. So you have to realize if you don't want to be a victim, you're going to have to take those steps. How? I don't know. It's up to you to figure it out. Maybe you need a travel companion. Maybe you need bodyguards. I don't know. 
Everybody's got their own situation, their own uh, threats, and all this stuff. You have to figure that out. This is Mike, nostressmike.com.